Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Caleb Bradens, and I'm a graduate student co-mentored by Kristen Lynch and Yosef Barash. Today, I'm going to talk to you about moccasin, a new method for correcting known and unknown confounders in RNA-seq-based splicing analysis. Confounding factors are unwanted factors impacting RNA-seq analysis. They impact identification of differentially expressed genes. They impact identification of samples and genes that cluster together in, for example, hierarchical clustering or principal component analysis. And they can impact identification of expression quantitative trait loci. Confounding factors can be known, for example, processing batch or sequencing lane, or unknown, for example, different mouse diets that weren't recorded in the experiment. And these factors can introduce extraneous variation leading to false positives and false negatives. Fortunately, confounding factors can be accounted for during gene expression analysis with well-established tools. For example, you may have heard of or used COMBAT or LIMA. However, there is a lack of tools for modeling known and unknown confounding factors in alternative splicing analysis. We suspect this scarcity of tools reflects a general lack of awareness of the effect of confounders on splicing analysis. Specifically, we were not able to find any previous work that quantitatively assessed the effect of confounders on splicing analysis. So we tend to quantify splicing from RNA-seq at local splicing variations, or LSVs. LSVs are loci from which alternative junctions splice from, and we use the Magique algorithm to quantify percent spliced in, or psi, of splice junctions at these LSVs. Importantly, our confident our confidence in psi depends on the number of reads in the LSV. This is something I'll come back to later. For our first experiment, we wanted to quantify to what extent confounding factors are even a problem for splicing analysis at all. Because it's well established that batch effects impact gene expression. What I'm showing here is a UMAP of gene expression from 870 RNA-seq samples of B-cell acute lymphoid leukemia from the target consortium. As you can see, the samples cluster in groups, and the group's colors correspond to two different batches. To illustrate why this is problematic, I've outlined with a square a sample that is a technical replicate of the samples outlined in a circle and a triangle. These technical replicates cluster with samples from the same batch rather than with each other. Furthermore, furthermore I've quantified that 6.7% of the total variation in gene expression across this dataset is due to this batch effect. Now, when we look at this data quantified for splicing, perhaps unsurprisingly, we see this same batch effect in the splicing analysis too. In fact, it is quantitatively more of a problem because the total variation in psi attributable to this batch effect is 15.9%, which is over two times more than the batch effect we see in gene expression. So, to address confounding factors in splicing, a former graduate student in Yosef's lab Barry Slav developed Moccasin. Moccasin models confounding factors affecting splicing quantification by adjusting counts of junction spanning reads jointly for each LSV. The read counts are scaled to 1 so that adjustments occur in size space, and we apply ordinary least squares regression independently for each junction n and each sample k, given a design matrix of known n and unknown u confounders as well as variables of interest to maintain V. We use surrogate variable analysis to identify unknown confounding factors in an approach that's very similar to the one used by Riso et al. in their RubSeq method. Importantly, after computing the adjusted counts, they are scaled back to the original number of reads in the LSV, since we use this read number to measure our confidence in psi. Please check out our preprint to get more details about how Moccasin works. We first tested Moccasin on simulated RNA-seq of mouse aorta and cerebellum samples. We simulated a ground truth set of samples in green, and we simulated samples in which half were injected with a batch effect in blue. I'm showing here the number of differentially spliced LSVs on the y-axis as a function of the difference's significance on the x-axis. On the left are splicing differences between the batch 1 versus 2 samples. As you can see in blue, we've injected a strong batch effect that didn't exist in the green ground truth. 
Moccasin brings these batch splicing differences down to ground truth, whether it is supplied with a known confounder in orange or discovers it on its own in gray. On the right, you can see how the injected batch effect introduced false positive differences between the aorta and cerebellum samples, and Moccasin reduces these false positives. We tested a wide range of simulated batch effects, which you can see in further detail in my poster or in the preprint. Next, we ran Moccasin on real data. And here on the left, I'm showing the UMAP that I showed you before of the target cancer data, where 15.9% of the total variation in psi is attributable to a batch effect. After applying Moccasin, this is brought down to 0.4%. You can check out my poster to see how I also applied Moccasin to over 1,000 ENCODE RNA-seq experiments, which also suffered from batch effects. I also show in my poster that Moccasin not only reduces false positives, but also increases power to detect differences in splicing in both the ENCODE and target datasets. To summarize, we show with two large public datasets that the magnitude of confounders effect on RNA splicing quantification is at least as big as that observed for gene expression analysis. We develop Moccasin, the first dedicated tool to correct for both known and unknown confounders in RNA splicing analysis, and demonstrate its effectiveness on both synthetic and real data. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge our funding from the, from the Cancer Moonshot and Nicholas Lanes from Greg Grant Lab for generating the simulated data, data, Anu and Paul for helping with analyses, and Barry for making Moccasin possible in the first place. Thank you for your time.